Good evening. Welcome to a very scrum delicious episode of Cat's Face. I am Cats. This is Bucket. So you with can't us see because I'm invisible. That's right. And always is my beautiful Luna and my brother Leon. Hi, guys. Hello. Good evening. Oh. Before Everybody, start... listen down and quiet up. Sorry. Before we start, I'd like to welcome the new subscribers to our channel. We hope you enjoy our shows and our podcasts and bring your friends and family along. And hello to our current subscribers of yours. We are getting into Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Take it away, Castro. I'd say, look, I'm already ready because I've got my golden ticket, so. Yeah! It's a got boarding that pass. That's got that for me, Wonka. Got that for me, Wonka thingy. But uh, unfortunately, I need to win the competition first. So there you go. I've got my entry. Oh. All right. Take it away, Maestro. Okay. Truth or bullshit. Um, Willy Wonka shamelessly announces from a white man's perspective that he uses slave labor from the Oompa Loompas to make his chocolate. Truth or bullshit? True. 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 That is 100% true. Yes. No, you, should, you shouldn't be saying yes. You should be saying no for slavery. But you all said yes. Wow. Next, I, I said nothing, so. Yeah, that's right. That's the correct response. I said yes because I won. <laughs> that's the correct response, which is to say nothing. Anyway, Snow Snowpiercer, the movie and series, is really an underlying theme. If Charlie Bucket were to ever live in a uh, post-apocalyptic train-based society, truth or bullshit? I go down. Nope. Sorry. False. Say it again, sorry. Snowpiercer the movie and series is really an underlying theme if Charlie Bucket were to ever live in a post-apocalyptic train-based society. Truth or bullshit? So I feel like I've heard this theory about something <laughs> along the lines of they were living during the apocalypse or something like that. I don't know if this in particular is associated with that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going with truth. I'm going to go so, with true as well. It's 100% true. Um, uh, both the series and the movie was based on Willy Wonka if uh, if Charlie Bucket was to take over and it was the end of the world. Jeez, that's dark, man. It is dark. Okay. Uh, Grandpa Joe would intentionally get Charlie uh, Bucket to break the law by purchasing tobacco for him. Truth or bullshit? Well, I'd call this one true. I don't know why, but my gut says true. I'm gonna go with false. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with true as well. It's it's true. Um, Yay. Uh, Grandpa Joe would constantly get Charlie to buy him tobacco and therefore breaking the law because <laughs> Charlie Bucket was underage. Yeah, but during those times, it was a very common thing and it was legal because they used to send the kids down to the corner shop to buy, you know, the tobacco and the liquor, whatever, and they would come back and the store mart would know them. Do you want to look up the law in England at that time? Is Show me. What time, time. What time was it set in, actually? It was set in the time of the Oompa Loompas. And by the way, I've got to say, Kat, you look very animated. <laughs> Doing something different with your hair. <laughs> I wanted to be in the picture, so there you go. Okay, next question. To demonstrate poverty and class-based systems, Roald Dahl originally imaged Charlie to be a black child. Truth or bullshit? False. Oh, oh boy. I say false. All right, let's go true. I'm, I'm going go. true. No, that's a hundred percent true. In fact, the original book um, had a black kid on it. I don't. So oh, it's a hundred percent true. Um, according to canon, Willy Wonka's father was a dentist. True. True. <clears throat> Leon. Uh, I'm gonna go with false. Say that again. Uh, according to canon, Willy Wonka's father was a dentist. True. That's a hundred percent true. Uh, uh, he was a dentist. As we Luna, know, Luna, did the... you guess? Did you put a guess down? I did. I said yes. Okay. DD, I said true. I said DD, DDS. Yeah, I said true. That ah, wasn't... yes, I get you now. That wasn't provided in the first movie. However, it was provided in the Johnny Depp sequel. 
Ah. I think it might be mentioned in the book too. Um, it, not that I recommend uh, recall, but it was in canon. Yes. Um, when um, Violet eats the three course meal gum and becomes a blueberry, Willy Wonka says they always turn into blueberries, hinting that he's experimented with others. Is this truth or bullshit? <laughs> true. Oh. I'm going to go true. Uh, no, it's this is actually 100% true. Oh. He has actually hinted that he has experimented with others, but the others would have been the Oompa Loompas. He actually says, always blueberries. He actually says it too. <laughs> he does actually say that. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, the National Rifle Association helps fund Willy Wonka, uh, the movie, um, to promote gun safety, saying that Mike TV should not own a real gun until he was 16. Is this truth or bullshit? True. I think it's true. I'm gonna go true. No, that one was bullshit. I made that one up. Oh, <laughs> oh we all crapped on that one. It was convincing enough. And you know what? With like association laws and children, I I would assume that they would have. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking the same logic too. They should have. <laughs> they had they had kids buying tobacco in that movie. It was all over the place. There was slave <laughs> lumpers, everything. Yeah. So the ink used for Violet was so toxic when she turned purple that it would not completely come off for months, which in turn would add extra magic to the film. Truth or bullshit? I'd say true. true. I've heard this one. I should have heard this one somewhere. I'm going true. So true. you're all true? Anyone false? Nope. That That's actually true. So oh, yay. she actually went to school... And it took about three months for the um, ink to actually rub off properly. And so a lot of the kids thought that the, the movie was real for a really long time. So that was, it did add, add a little bit she, of extra magic. Yeah, she did say in an interview that it got under her skin, it got under her nails, it got, she scrubbed and scrubbed, couldn't get it off, and then eventually just started to wear off. That means yeah. that they had to film all those that scene right at the end before they filmed the rest of the movie. Um, uh, most, after they, sorry, after not before. Probably yes. Um, that's that's probably true. Yeah, that should have been one of my questions. I didn't have the they didn't have the right solution to wash it off. Yeah, maybe. Just turn her blue at the end. <laughs> so, hey, I'm back. No, that was like a magic. That you destroyed the magic. Oh. No, no, the magic was there. You just came out of the came out of the gingerbread house. I looked like a woman again. Wonderful. <laughs> um, you never look better. Oh, one hundred percent of the garden lolly scene in the film was completely edible. Is this truth or bullshit? No, false. no, I don't no. think so. I call false. I'm going false. Okay, you're all 100% correct, Yay. but 75% of it was edible. I think the only person who could possibly, since they've recreated this movie again just recently, I think the only person who can make this edible is Heston. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. He's already done it on his other show. What right? about that guy that creates, like, giant orangutans and pianos out of chocolate? He could probably do it too. Uh, Almory, yeah, he's amazing. Love him. You know, when you were saying that, I was thinking, no, they can't be talking about David Edinburgh. That, that's not right. But anyway. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> you know, anyway. Uh, the new Plymouth Play Company threatened to sue an Auckland school mid-play if they did not cease the production due to copyright infringements. True. 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 Yeah, that's 100% correct. Um, all the kids were were ready to get dressed, do this. That's flight, so bad. And they were halfway through it, and yeah. then they sent their lawyers out. Yeah, and, and they got in trouble. To assist and assist, we will sue you for everything. I and only know that because I was in every production that my high school produced, and I remember the teachers talking about, like, oh, we can only afford this script this year because you have to pay for the scripts. You can't just do it. Yeah. Um, we all really wanted to do Willy Wonka, but it was expensive. 
Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that Simpsons of those Simpsons episodes where they try to do something and the lawyers immediately jump right in. Cease and desist, <laughs> you know, all that sort of stuff. So, Leon, what's the scores so far? If you could please tell me the uh, scores. All right. So, at the round one, Leon and Luna are on eight, and Cat is on six. Ooh, very close round this round. Um, so- do, do, do. Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Which is more true? The flour that Willy Wonka ate was actually made of sugar. Truth or bullshit? I'd what? say... No, well, oh, okay, sorry. But you said which is more true, and then you only gave us one statement. Oh, and I should finish the question. <laughs> Augustus Gloop needed to be separated from the rest of the cast so to learn English. Which mm. is more true? I second. Say- sorry, Kay, you go first. No, you can't do that, Luna. I want you to answer first. <laughs> Come back to me, I'll give you the answer. The second one. I'm going with the second one. I'm going with the second one too. Um, yes, so uh the second one is true, but the first one where Willy Wonka ate the um the flour that looks like a cup of tea. It was, was made out of rice flour or something, rice paper, wasn't it? No, he was eating plastic. Oh, oh yum. What? Got that plastic really? flavor. <laughs> Plastic, plastic. So, he, or maybe, maybe it was like wax plastic. Because how did he chew it? He actually bit it. He he put he bit the plastic, okay, and then they panned away and he spat it out. So <laughs> that was real plastic that he was eating. Ew! Wow. Uh, I just, I just Can you imagine I just was like, Sorry. you know, yeah. That if if that isn't method <laughs> acting, then I don't know what is. He's a madman. I just the record. We're going. We're talking about uh, Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory. I'm actually drinking Coke Zero Sugar. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 what's, you're, what's that got to do with the price? I'm just asking a question. I don't know if you have a question list, but the chocolate river that um, what's that kid's name? Augustus into- Gloop. Yeah, apparently that's not real. It's that's not. Chocolate- it's, it was made out of like mud and whatever and water. Yeah, they tried to make it out of chocolate. Of yeah, course, they, tried- they can't make it out of chocolate. The kid would have drowned in chocolate, guys. Come on. <laughs> Oh, that's the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and to make it liquidy, they would have had to have had it like warm. <laughs> Hot chocolate, maybe. You're exposing too many answers, people. <laughs> Luna's already got six, and there's only been five questions. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> please. Each Oompa Loompa song in the Johnny Depp version cor- or correlates to a different era of music. Or President Gaddafi once quoted Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as an example of what would happen if children weren't properly disciplined in his famous <laughs> I think the first one. Oh, God. I'm going to go with the first one because I don't want to be associated with Gaddafi at all. I'm going with the first one as well. Right, yeah, well, the first one's correct, but I'll tell you why it's correct. So... <laughs> Augustus gets the Broadway era, um, as Willy Wonka says, quotes used after shows. Violet uses the disco era, and Wonka says, let's boogie. And Veruca <laughs> gets the psychedelic era, and Wonka says, keep trucking. And Mike TV gets the rock era, and Wonka says, on tour, in reference to rock tours. <laughs> so, yeah. But I would have thought it was funny if Gaddafi did quote something for Willy Wonka. I would have fallen out of my chair. I was going to say, there's no way that he even knew about it, or maybe he did, but didn't I care did. for, for sure. I'm sure he has a vast knowledge. Uh, you know. to the... Anyway, everyone sure he has a vast knowledge. You know, um, Roald Dahl originally based the original concept of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory based on his son's love of chocolate, or... Roald, Dahl orig- uh, Roald Dahl's original script was rejected three times uh, before it was purchased by Disney, which is more the true. Second one. I think I've heard this, but I, I know I know a Roald uh, something was rejected three times, but I don't know what don't don't know what one. Yeah, was. exactly. I'm not hundred percent sure either, but I'm going with the second one. I'm going with the um, first. Okay, Leon. I'm going with the say? second one. Cat's uh, the only one who's correct. It okay. was. Uh, Roald Dahl did write a book based on his son's love of chocolate because everyone loves chocolate, which I mentioned just before mentioning this. So you all should have been listening. 
I feel like deducting a point based on your stupidity, but anyway. Hey. Um, but do you know, I, actually, I won't because I love you all. I actually heard that. After he insulted us. <laughs> I actually heard that that he wrote the book because his son loves chocolate so much. That's why I kind of knew the answer because I... See, I, I have that. heard that as well, but then I have also heard that second fact about... some. Maybe it wasn't Roald Dahl, but I remember there was a famous author whose fame, now famous book got rejected three times before it got picked up by a company, but I, it mustn't be Willy Wonka. It must have been something else. I thought it was Star Wars. Wasn't Star Wars the one that got rejected three times before it was picked oh, up? It was rejected three times, actually, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. It was a good, good, uh, good, good, good callback from myself, eh? Next. Too bad you didn't get a point for it. Um, yeah. Uh, so Johnny, next... <laughs> Johnny Depp actually had a chocolate allergy in his mouth um, uh, in his youth, which completely turned him off chocolate, regardless of the fact he's surrounded by chocolate everywhere he goes. Or... Julie Andrews could have played Charlie Bucket's mother if it wasn't for a throat infection. Which is more true? First one. First one. Hang on the second one. No, the first one's correct. Uh, Johnny Depp actually did have a chocolate allergy in his youth. Um, and Julie Andrews was never really offered the role and didn't was too busy with other things. Like Mary Poppins or something? Yeah. So... Uh, the original book was called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and was changed to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory due to uh, better promote the company Wonka. Or while it could have been changed to Belinda as Berlin is a place that makes fine chocolates, oh. which is more true. The first one. Uh, first one. On the That's first. One. The first one is correct. Yes. Um, awesome. Mike TV could have been called um, herpes or trout or oh, wait, 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 wait. hold up hold up did I hear that correctly <laughs> Mike TV could have been called herpes trout <laughs> or the film was filmed in Manchester England which is more true <sighs> I'm sorry but I'm going with the second one I don't feel like the first one's plausible but actually actually go with the first one let's go with the first one because that's so outrageous but it must be true i don't know what are you guys doing i'll go with the second one i'm gonna go with the first one no, all right i'm going number two i'm going number two so you're going number two and then no, no, number going? one i'm going number one i'm going number one no 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 i'm, I'm accepting your first answer what, oh, okay. what did you... number what two was... then number two second number two okay leon what do you think Number one. Number one. Uh, Leon happens to be the only one that's correct. Hey, hey, hey. hey, we should have a rule where we can change our answer before the actual oh. answer. And uh, can we say gross? And the film um, uh, was not filmed in Manchester, England. It was filmed in Munich, Germany. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. It sounded too preposterous. It had to be correct. So <laughs> I think we should have a rule where we can, as long as we haven't heard the answer yet, we should be able to change our answer. No, I, I so you can get more points. <laughs> no, why though? Because I was I was undecided anyway. How am I going to get more points if I haven't heard the answer yet? <laughs> Leon, please, please, please share with the world how I'm going to get more points if I haven't even heard the answer. Do well, study. I, I, to be honest, to be honest, I'm. This is all guesswork for me. I need to start watching Willy Wonka. To be honest, it's about like complete guesswork. Okay, guesswork. The the Oompa Loompas were originally going to be called the Ethiopians, oh, but God. it was changed due to not being culturally sensitive at the time. Or there were originally going to be nine kids instead of five kids to win the golden tickets, um, which is more true. I'd say the second one. I'm sorry. I'm not even going to add uh, entertain the first one. So I'm going to go gonna, with the second one. I'm going to go with the second one too. I refuse to entertain it. Luna, what do you think? Yeah, just go with, the, go with number two. Okay, so the second one is correct. However, I, I do need to basically say they weren't going to call them Ethiopians. They were going to call them pygmies, oh, but they thought that was too to? racist. Do we have to so, go there? So, yeah. well, they did. So that bit, 
So it, it wasn't Ethiopians that they were going to use. It was pygmies instead, which again was very racist and very, very wrong. And it what sounds and it I, sounds right for that year for that. I era. just feel like everyone back in those times. What was like? I'm sorry, but the white people, obviously, what was wrong with them? What? Why? They're but, so like, hateful. I, I just don't even want to feel associated just, to them. I, it just makes me so upset. Stop saying that. But but that's yeah. That, that was it was um massively controversial. Oh, obviously. Uh, uh, in the tunnel scene, none of the actors except for Gene Wilder knew about the horror scene, and they genuinely thought Gene was having a psychedelic breakdown, which added to the realism um, and the terror. Or Grandpa Joe took a pay cut so he could play his character as originally um, he was going to be Violet's father, which is more true. Number one. Yeah, going to go number one. I'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, Kat, which is yours? Number two. Uh, no, number one was correct. 99% of uh, the chocolate bars that were in Willy Wonka's and Willy really Wonka and the Chocolate Factory were actually made of wood. Or Willy Wonka's hat was made from cardboard to save money, which is more true. Can you say that again? 99% of the chocolate bars that were in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory were actually made of wood. Or Willy Wonka's hat was made from com was completely made from cardboard to save money. Which is more true? I'd say the first one because number one. Like, yeah, I'd say the first one. I say the first one as well. That seems to make a lot more sense. Pro production wise, I don't see them skimping on a costume. I see them like trying to long last product, especially chocolate could expire, go moldy. So mm, the first one. Yeah, look, keep in mind th these are guys that didn't waste any money on getting the most toxic ink possible for a single girl. So yeah, like the the first <laughs> one is obviously true. <laughs> here's some here's some pieces of wood kids eat up <laughs> good for your health yeah. tell everyone it's chocolate otherwise you won't get paid yeah next right. question okay sammy david jr really, davis sam davis jr sorry really <laughs> wanted uh to sing the role of the candy man but was denied because they thought his fame would overshadow the film or willy wonka has never appeared on the Family Guy, which is more true. First one. First one, definitely. First one. Because they did a Willy Wonka parody on Family Guy. My mind buzzed out for a second there with when you said the Family Guy. I just thought, I'm like, what's that? And then I clicked straight away. Yes. So, so I'd say the first one. Uh, so the Sammy Davis Jr. one was 100% correct because he was really popular. And he uh, also did a song called The Candyman. And also in the uh, future, it's a future armor. Uh, sorry, not future armor. Uh, Family Guy episode where he actually did uh, do a parody of it, um, of uh, Willy Wonka. <coughs> and they started, they, they brought the Oompa Loompas out and they started singing the, one of the songs. That, and after the first couple of words, uh, Willy Wonka kicked uh, Peter Griffin in the shin. So he spent the next couple of moments just rolling on the ground going, I hate what oh I start I hate when they do that so and you watch all of it and they make it go for like a minute two minutes straight. Yep. A little bit of bonus <laughs> material for you all. Uh, next round. <clears throat> Hang on, but first of all, after the end of round two, Leon, Luna, and Cat all got eight points. I just like to say that I've got nothing so far, so I feel. <clears throat> Well, 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 maybe next time when we do a trivia thing, maybe <laughs> Luna could be you, the hardest. You, have, you have the answers bucket, so don't worry. <laughs> I feel even more defeated now. <laughs> you, you've won. You you hit the jackpot. Uh, right. Okay. Um, round three, uh, Willy Wonka um, treats. Okay. Um, let's see. So... You've got to tell me um, what these treats are, what they what they look like, and um, what do they taste like potentially. Um, so um, I'll give you an example. So the Willy Wonka gob smackers, gob stoppers, thing. Yeah. gob smackers. Tell me what that would be. 
Who are you going to first? Are we are we going anyone here? Because my mind went straight for dirty, so <laughs> I don't know about anyone else. Really yeah. We could be as controversial as we possibly can. We don't want to get flagged. I don't think we're going to get flagged because none of us are making money, so it doesn't matter. So please repeat the name of the product. It is the Willy Wonka Gob Smackers. Not to be confused with the Willy Wonka Gob Stoppers. Okay, so the Willy Wonka Gob Smackers. Um, so wait, so ha- can you explain to me how we play again? Are we creating a product based off this or what? You are creating a product here. Yeah. Can we can, can create can we create a business based off of that? If you want to, for sure. All right. So the Willy <laughs> Wonka Willy Wonka Gobsmackers is actually a gang. Um, and they actually <laughs> they actually go around and they're called the Willy Wonka Gobsmackers because when you take their chocolates, the smack in the gob. Right. Um, so they're pretty much the mob for the Oompa Loompas and stuff like that. Um, yeah. They all dress up like Willy Wonka, more intimidating. Um, and, yeah, they they smack you in the gob. That's their right. job. Would anyone like to, to challenge or test it? I do. All right, what do you have? The Willy Wonka gob smacker, boys and girls, is the most sourest gob smacker on planet Earth. You take one lick of this and your whole face get sucked in that you can't feel these cheeks and it smacks you right in your goblets. They're really, really, really sour. Right. So when you have it, you won't want to try it again. I wouldn't try these, but if you dare, try the Willy Wonka Willy Wonka gobsmackers, the sourest of sourest of lollies you could ever eat. Enjoy. Leon, do you have anything that can contest this? Yeah, but I think I might. The Willy Wonka gobsmacker is exploding in your mouth when you kiss your partner. If you're single, then you won't feel a thing and you'll look and feel blue. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give a point to each of you because all of those are really great answers. Well done. <laughs> um, okay, Luna, could you please tell me what the everlasting complaint is? <laughs> <laughs> So basically, the everlasting complaint is a new product by Willy Wonka they've just brought out, um, and it's practically for men having a hard time finding a wife. Um, you take the everlasting complaint, and boom, just like that, women are attracted to you. However, they're just women that like to complain. So good luck with that. <laughs> Bye <anyone> now. Like- <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Bye, Bye right one. now. I got a cat first. No. She's got nothing. What, what do you right. mean? You're never satisfied with anything that Wonka does, so we'll give you an everlasting complaint. And that's basically us complaining about you because you are complaining about us. So. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So I'm going to give Luna two points and I'm going to give Leon two points. Well done. Hey. I, I, I had to put this one in. Um, so, Kat, could you please tell me what the chocolate sausage is? Oh. <laughs> Buckus, would you like to tell us what the chocolate sausage is? <laughs> oh. The chocolate Sorry. sausage, boys and girls, is a chocolate log filled with yummy, yummy chocolate. Dark chocolate to milk chocolate ratio. It also has pop rocks in it. It's like a sausage, but it's not a sausage. It doesn't even taste like a sausage. It's sweet as candy. It comes in a small, medium, or large size. <laughs> sausage also is wrapped very delicately like a lifesaver. But it's not hard. It's soft like a jelly bean. So if you want to purchase a sausage, come in today and buy one for only five ninety five. The chocolate sausage will, can be all yours. Leon, do you have something that could t- <laughs> test? <laughs> <on that. clears throat> Try Wonka's new chocolate sausage. Because if you don't, well, that's your own, that's your own business. Oh, I, don't know. I, don't I can't stop cats. Luna, what do you have an explanation for the chocolate? <laughs> uh, so a chocolate sausage is actually a festive dish that the elves eat around Christmas. It's actually reindeer meat and chocolate mixed right. together, and they purchase it down their local Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> the local Aldi. Uh, uh, uh. So it's a cheap dessert. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. right, you all get a point for that. Well done. Wonderful. <clears throat> oh, good God. Okay. Uh, 
uh, Leon, could you please tell me what the Beef Bombay toothpaste is? The Beef Bombay. Try Wonka's new Beef Bombay toothbrush. Uh, was it toothpaste, was it? Toothpaste. Yeah. Try, Willie, try Wonka's new Bombay toothpaste. It doesn't quite taste like chocolate, but it tastes like wood and beef jerky. Right. Um, Kat, what do you have? I have nothing. I'm not even going to entertain it. Sorry. Okay. Luna, what do you have? All right. So I have one. So it's not actually a product. It's actually a failed product. You know, remember in the movie that scene where they they get the hair cream? (laughs) (laughs) So it was actually a failed experiment. It was a rogue oompa trying to uh, create some new products for the factory. And he actually didn't know the ingredients had to be made from chocolate. So he put some Bombay into it. So you're trying to convince me that like there was a Oompa Loompa that basically went down to the local Indian um, <laughs> shop. Unfortunately, he got a, he got addicted to the butter chicken and the naan. He loves the naan so much. Um, so he brought it back to the factory and they're like, hey, bro, we only do chocolate here. Hey, and, bro. Um, <laughs> and he was like, guys, let's have some Bombay toothpaste, at least just to brush our teeth, change the flavoring a little bit, you know? Um, and they pre- he pretty much got fired for that incident. It was really sad. Oh, right. Pretty sad. <laughs> He then started to work as a um a mini me for the uh Willy Wonka Mafia, a mob the gobstoppers, the gobsmackers. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna give uh Leon and uh Luna two points for that. Well done. Oh god. <clears throat> I like how I like how you made it re- I know I like how you make it decade relevant, Luna, by saying, Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only authenticity. Yeah, man. That's incredible. Um, okay, so uh, the cat, could you please tell me what the late night kebab Panadol two in one is? <laughs> oh, what is it? The kebab late what? night kebab Panadol two in one. Oh, God. I don't know. Come um, on, cat, you got this. You got this. Think about, think about like when you go out drinking and you get kebabs after, and then you need a Panadol maybe, maybe something in that. No, that's your answer now. I, no, that's her It's hers. I'm sorry. No, I don't have anything. You don't have anything? Okay, no. Luna, what do you have? Considering you... you... Something something in there, something along the lines of it, like a Panadol kebab, pill, a pill kebab. Maybe it's a Panadol that tastes like kebab and it does the same effect. So you can eat the kebab, but instead of being sick and throwing it up because you're drunk and you need to eat something to feel better, the Panadol will do all of that and it tastes like kebab. Sorry. <laughs> Who's buying, bro? Sorry. Right. Leon, what do you have? Oh, you God, have- here we go. All right. So a late night kebab, late night kebab Panadol 2-in-1. If you're, hang- if you're hungover after a late night choggy, try Wonka's brand new late night kebab Panadol 2-in-1. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> I'm convinced the guy that made the Bombay toothpaste had something to do with this. Right. So I, I, I've got to go with both of them. Because I like the fact that you think it's a two in one as it's two separate products. And you think it's one product. <laughs> <Those two things. laughs> it just tastes like bad. So I've got to give you two points for <laughs> wonderful. Bad pun at all. They got but the now. points. They got the points. <laughs> you yeah, and me. Two points. Well done. All right. Um uh Kat, could you please tell me what the McDonald's, the shampoo and conditioner actually is. Oh, this one. <laughs> Forgot your late night run to McDonald's. You like something fatty, oily, and tasty. That will go right into your arteries. We want you to buy the shampoo and conditioner right from the supermarkets where you can buy the Big Mac shampoo or the McChicken shampoo and conditioner with the Big Mac shampoo and conditioner and treatment. Or you could try the apple pie shampoo conditioner to smell. Oh, I would try that one. (laughs) You have a vast array of sundaes too for shampoos and conditioners, strawberry, caramel, and chocolate fudge. Mm. So forgot your late night run? Go down to the supermarket and get yourself some McDonald's shampoos and conditioners for only $19.99. Oh, it's pretty cheap. Does anyone else feel like they're going to be really sticky after using this product? <laughs> Either that or feeling very fatty. <laughs> really really sheen and oily. <clears throat> the McDonald's, the shampoo and conditioner. 
uh, product. Is okay, it... so let me set the scene for you. The right. year is uh, 3,500. <laughs> the, apo- the, apo- the apocalypse has happened. Obviously, the only things that survived were Twinkies, cockroaches, and McDonald's. And obviously, the work is inside somehow too. And um, so they're falling on hard times. There's no food around. So the only thing that they can somehow make is products. So products don't expire. They just go and get all the shampoos and they just put an M on it and they're just going to upsell it for like fifty nine ninety nine for two bottles. Um, buy it now from McDonald's in the year 3,500 if you make it. I don't know if you guys will make it there, but I'll make it. So, are you trying to tell me that you're going to live an extra one thousand five hundred? Never mind. Phil, who and... do you think's who do you think's running the McDonald's? Uh, I don't know clones. Um, Onka. <laughs> Leo. Leo. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> Leo. Tell me what the McDonald's shampoo and conditioner actually is. Uh, the McDonald's shampoo and conditioner comes in all shapes and sizes and 100% non patty. Trust me. And you can upsize it for a dollar with a Big Mac and Coke. Well done. Uh, you're all going to get a point for that. Well done. <laughs> I like all of your answers. Hey, honest to God, though, if McDonald's started selling like shampoo, I don't know, shampoo and conditioner, entire cutlery sets, entire dinner sets, you someone would buy them for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'd, I'd buy them for sure. Yeah, it, it you really go to the drive thru, you get a soft soft serve cone and a McDonald's hoodie and a chocolate sausage. Anyway, um, yes, we're gonna put that in the, in the snow cone, but don't worry about it. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, Luna, could you please tell me what a self esteem sugar hit is? A self esteem sugar hit, so pretty much, um, probably around. November, uh, October, November time in the North Pole. It's actually a really stressful time. Santa is obviously on high alert, you know, they're like trying to get the presents out. He's just in a really PMS type of mood. Like he's just getting older. He wants to retire. He just needs obviously the help. And the elves during that time tend to take quite a mental lashing from him at times, um, obviously in stress. And they just need like a little pick me up. So they went to the North Pole Center and they prayed to Mother Magic and she created this little self-esteem drop and they just take it and like a, you know, like a antidepressant and make them feel better. Pretty much okay. antidepressants. Right. So it sounds like a drug <laughs> for a start. Um, <laughs> I'm worried, wondering, is this even legal? <laughs> legal. What what is the self-esteem sugar hit? A self-esteem sugar hit. If you're feeling down, try the new self-esteem sugar hit. It'll give you that instant pick-me-up and you'll feel like brand new for the rest of the day. Mind you, tomorrow you'll be feeling completely SHI, but uh, I'm sure there's a tea in there somewhere, but it'll give you this to pick up that you need right here, right now. Okay. Kat, what is the self-esteem sugar hit? Eating all the Wonka bars you could ever get your hands on. Feeling stressed, feeling low, exhausted. Ooh. After a long day of work or just sitting at home studying or working from home, you need a sugar hit, feeling a bit yeah. crushed. Why not celebrate and have all the Wonka bars you can eat, including all the Wonka ice creams and lollies, including your favorite gobstopper. So for anti stress, dig into Willy Wonka's chocolate family blocks and ice cream. And guess what? You'll be walking on the walls in no time. For only $39.99. But wait, there is more, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You will get all the sugar rush and you won't be able to sleep to another five days. So congratulations <laughs> if you bought this product. There you go. <laughs> you all get Cat's, a point. Cat, Cat's answer is the most plausible there because that that would like that's it. that's exactly what it means. Because you over you would eat the entire bag of M&Ms and then you get a sugar hit and you get, what was, what was it called again? Sorry, what was the product called? Self-esteem. self-esteem sugar hit. And then you get a self-esteem sugar hit because you're trying to get your self-esteem up. So you eat all the candy and then you get a sugar hit. <laughs> right. So, well done. So you're all saying it's a symptom. <laughs> <Why not? laughs> God dang it. Okay. So uh, the last one is, okay, Leon, I'm going to start with you. Um, my Bitter Life, a story about licorice. Tell me what exactly <laughs> Uh, I can't tell you how bad my life has been. Uh, these licorice, oh, this licorice hits. 
They've done wonders for my figure, and by that I mean wondrously bad things to my figure. And what's even worse than that, I'm allergic to bloody uh, licorice as well. So, so there's a lesson to be learned here. Lay off that licorice. So, what, what is this, a myth? Is, is this a myth? Is that what that is? I have one. The I have myth, one. the man, the legend. No, I'm I actually have... legitimately allergic to licorice, so yeah. Anyway. I have one. Can you repeat the question? Okay. Um, my bitter life, a story <laughs> about licorice. My bitter life about a story about licorice. <laughs> Recently, <laughs> I've been trying to lose some weight and eat healthy. However, licorice does help you flush out your system. <clears throat> If you're feeling really bitter about anything and everything, licorice will help pass through. So if you ever need to go to the bathroom, now's the time with plenty of that god awful licorice. Get it into your system, mm-hmm. and it'll help you flush all those yuckies out. So you won't be feeling bitter anymore. Oh God! Not, could you please tell me um, exactly? Is my bitter life a story about licorice? Let's set the scene. <laughs> we open on a desolate and lonely piece of licorice. He's got a <laughs> bottle of liquor in his hands and a cigarette in the other. He's drunk beyond belief. It's 11 p.m. at night. The curtain opens up. The audience looks in. No one ever picks me because I taste like crap. No one ever picks me because I taste like that. I'm the licorice. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. I'm That's sold. It. I'd pay to watch that. I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> Not coming soon to Broadway anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's the last question. Uh, Leon, could you please add up? Who got around? the points on that last one? You all did. One point. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So after round three, Leon Luna got 11, Kat got five. We do have a, well, actually, we have a tie, the final Ooh. score. Okay. <clears throat> right now, right now, Leon and Luna are on 27 points. Yes. And uh, who who's not on 27 points? Kat. <laughs> okay. Was that okay. needed? Did that needed to be confirmed, Buckers? When I said no. we have a tie, I <laughs> kind of. You know. Okay, so I guess we're going to have to have a tie breaker. Okay. Zim Zam Zom, ready? I don't no, even know. Uh, oh, means... Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, God. No, I'm, I'm going to have to think of another one just off the top of my head now. Luna and oh. I are ready to do rock, paper, scissors, you dupe. No. <laughs> oh, they come on. Oh, okay. Ready? Rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Okay. Oh my god! Again, rock, rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Ah, you won. There you go. I got scissors. There you go. Congratulations! You, you won. Not by- <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime of supply of Wonka. What did I win, guys? Tell me what I won. A new car. Yeah, yeah, you get a lifetime supply of Wonka, even though Wonka's bankrupt. Wonderful. <laughs> I get a lifetime supply of delusion, well, hey? That was our Willy Wonka chocolate trivia question. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed playing along. Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and invite your friends. We are getting ready for another podcast next week. We will see you guys soon. Thank you for joining me, Luna and Leon. And Buckets. The Invisible Man. Invisible Man, who thank was you for having me, Big Master. Mm-hmm. I'm Kat. Once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our current subscribers, viewers, and our new ones too. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Other I, than I, I just like that to say, I, I really got to give back Harry's invisibility cloak back. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, we will see you all next week. Good night. See you Bye. Later. Bye.